All right, today we're gonna to talk about the scalable reverse image search engine for NASA Worldview. So my name is Abegu Sadani. Uh, I'm a researcher at SpaceML and an undergraduate student at UCLA. Uh, I worked on this project with Mike Levy, who is also a researcher at SpaceML. So what was our goal? Currently, it can take multiple months in order to create a sufficient image database in order to examine a certain phenomenon. For example, a wildfire, right? To amend this, we designed a reverse image search engine that allows a scientist to select an image of a phenomenon and then the engine will return all other similar images to the scientist, cutting down the database assembly time by a thousand X. The engine will also search upon multiple zoom levels because phenomena don't only exist at one level, they can exist at multiple different levels. So a hurricane, and a smaller ecosystem won't exist at the same zoom level of satellite imagery, All right? So how, uh, how would we go about doing this? So say we have all these images and we wanna search this query image among all of them. How would we go about doing that? Right? So obviously the computer can't see and understand what this image looks like visually to us. So what does the computer do? So that's where image representation comes in. Say we have this image here. And we want to, you know, get a meaningful representation of it. So a computer can understand numbers. So therefore, we have to start getting a meaningful representation of this image in numerical form. How do we do that? So say we have a convolutional neural network or a CNN that is trained to classify images like this. So it will classify this image into these four classes. So what we end up doing is instead of taking the classification of the images, what we look at is the layer of the neural network right before the classification, and that layer contains what we are gonna call features, which is a numerical representation of this image that brings out in, in a numerical way, the important features or the distinguishing features of this image that separate it from everything else in the, in, the, in the database. So this is what we're gonna use as our search parameter as we go forward. So here we see the MNIST database when it is graphed by its image features. Um, so as you can see, all these zeros are in a similar spot all the eights are together, all the threes are together, all the ones are together over there, right? Because when they're graphed by their features, similar images have very close and very similar features. And this is the uh, you know, phenomenon that we can use as to our advantage when we're doing reverse image search. Here's an example of the same sort of map, except now with satellite imagery. Uh, so we can see you know, grasslands over here, tundra and clouds over here and oceans over there, all clumped together in similar areas. So let's look at the pipeline of how image searching based on this featureization tactic uh, plays out. So we have our query image. We generate features from that image using an intermediate AI training layer. So we have now this big list of features. That's step one. Step two, we find the distance between this features and then all the other image features we have in our database. This is the Euclidean distance as is our, is our way of doing that. So this is our database and we don't store other images as images there, we store them as features. So we take all the images that we want to search on and we just featureize all of them. So that's a time consuming process. And once it's done, once it's done, once it is done, it's really good for, uh, for searching. Then we sort for the closest, most similar images. So we just take the distances and then we sort for the smallest distance at the top and the largest at the bottom. And then we report the three closest images as your nearest neighbors. And as you can see, the uh, these two are, are uh, very similar. And then as you go along, uh, they get more and more different. So these are the nearest neighbors. And this is what we call similarity search. So this is the four step pipeline process of image similarity search. So let's go see how this uh, similarity search works uh, in real life. So here's our search. This is NASA Worldview. So let's, uh, let's see how our search engine works upon uh, this tool. I'm gonna go back in time a bit. to October, and I'm gonna zoom in on this island here off the coast of Western Africa. Then I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna search, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this area as my search region. And let's see what I get back. And I get back many, many islands, right? So, as you can see, the, the, the featureizer, the convolutional neural network that we used as our, as our featureizer was able to detect the patterns in the satellite imagery 
and was now when he, when those numbers were used as a search parameter, those numbers were meaningful, and therefore all the all the images we got back were island. This is an island. That's an island. That's an island. This contains islands, as does that. So we were, we were able to successfully do a reverse image search on this image of the Earth. So let's do another example, but this time I'm going to take it one step further. So let's look at the coast of Libya and. Yes, and let's go over there and let's search. As you can see, we get a lot of, you know, coasts back and coasts that actually have the exact same orientation as the coast we just searched. Um, and as you can see, this was almost a, uh, you know, this is, I think, the exact same coast as the one we just searched. So the, the featureization does really work. So let's select a few of these images and refine our search and let's see what it does. The search is already pretty refined. So, you know, and by, by refined, uh, you'll see what I mean by that. So let's submit, there we go, All right? And then we go to the top and we can see that more of the, of the images to the top are images with desert and ocean in them, right? It's the image, this image set is already quite refined, but it's actually, there's a lot more desert and ocean images now. As you can see, there's a higher concentration of them closer to the top. So we were able to select a few images and those images were images that contain desert and ocean, not forest and ocean. So, you know, I was trying to get rid of the images like these as they have now moved closer to the bottom and then refined our data set to have the images that we were really searching for move to the top. And as you can see at the top, we have images that are containing desert and ocean. This is also desert and that's also a desert, that's also a desert and, and so on. So this way we can not only search, but we can refine our search and, and really close in on the exact phenomenon we're trying to uh, make a data set of. So let's get to the project aims now. So one of our pro big project aims was developer-friendly and reproducible code, right? This code was made off the worldview repository. So it's something that is already developer-friendly because it is such a widely used tool in the space research and the earth research community. And it is reproducible and usable in many different earth science scenarios because it's already such a used tool. It's not a new tool that scientists have to shift to. So we met that goal. The next goal is we wanted to have a cloud-based architecture. It has to work in the cloud as, as most things do in, in the modern day. So let's look at how we achieve that. And here we met with, oh, skip the slide. Uh, here we met with the four step process again. So step one, step two, and three, and step four. So first we snip the image as we did in our demo. The image goes to our cloud database where it is then featureized with the convolutional neural network. And this network we trained on several, uh, on several hundred satellite images that were trained to classify those images, but we didn't look at their classification. We simply looked at the layer right before classification to be our image features. Then the image features generated of the query image are compared to the features in our database through fast approximate nearest neighbor search the IDs of the closest matches are then returned to the user in the form of Gibbs URLs. Gibbs URL, Gibbs is, a, um, is an API that NASA provides to access satellite imagery and we return our IDs as Gibbs URLs to the user in step four. And so they can now see the output of their search. Um, and the IDs are indexed in such a way that they can be easily converted to Gibbs URLs and vice versa. And the vice versa is important because refinement image search works on that property. So in, um, in refinement image search, because we don't want to re-featureize everything, right? Um, because that would be a waste of time. What we do is we take the Gibbs URLs of the images given here, convert them back into the IDs, use those IDs to extract the, um, uh, the features for the selected images that we want to refine with, and then use those extracted IDs to research within the database from which they came and return the refined results to the user. So as you can see, this is the exact scenario I showed you with you know, all this greenery going away and more desert images coming to the top, right? And that's how the refinement image search works without having to re-featureize everything and, and, and being time, uh, time you know, consuming. The last one is it has to be scalable. This whole process has to run quickly. And so scalability really, really ref depends on two things, memory and speed. So, Let's take a look at that. So some background, our data set that we used for in the demo uh, was a 51,000 images at low level zoom, Gibbs level eight zoom. 
and 200 images at high level zoom, which is Gibbs level four. And we can see some examples of these images right here. Right, and some more uh, background. Uh, the uh, experiments show that accuracy stops increasing significantly after embedding size of, uh, of 100. So the accuracy of a nearest neighbor search will, will basically continue to have benefits as the embedding size increases up to 100, at which point the benefits are very marginal and they taper off very quickly, as you can see here. So this tells us that our embeddings need to be around about a size 100 to be in that sweet spot of accuracy, but also not overusing memory. So what did we do to do this? We took ResNet 50, which is the classic um, featureizer and the, the industry used neural network. And we added a dense layer to the end of it. Uh, so that reduced our embedding length from about 2000 to about 100. So it was a 1 16th reduction in our embedding size. So it means less storage and speed up on brute force search. And then uh, now let's look at the factors to consider for approximate nearest neighbor method. So we went over what it means to reduce the storage it takes to store the features itself, but we also need to search upon those stored features in a quick manner. So the four aspects we're gonna look at here are speed, accuracy, time to build index, and the size. Uh, time to build index is the time it takes to uh, assemble the database, right? And size is the size of the database, which we addressed above, and speed and accuracy are speed and accuracy, the speed of searching and the accuracy of searching. So here we see uh, brute force nearest neighbors at 100% accuracy and at a relatively slow queries per second rate, right? And if we use this rate, um, the system really isn't scalable. Right? And this data is taken from the GLEV 100 uh, data set with 400K embeddings at each being 100 dimensions. So this is actually, this the 100 dimensions is similar to what we were searching for. But now, what we decided to use instead to make it a lot more scalable, as I mentioned before, was the approximate nearest neighbors method, right? Whereas the brute force is exact, the approximate aims to get a very close to perfect search accuracy and recall, uh, but the uh, queries per second are much faster because you're not brute forcing uh, through every single nanometer data set, you are rather approximating it. So the library we used was Annoy, uh, and this green, light green line here, uh, represents annoy, and as you can see, it's significantly faster, orders of magnitude faster actually, uh, than the brute force method. And that's what allowed us to really get scalable and have the search of the 50,000 images as quickly as you saw in our demo. So future work, we will be making Docker containers available to scientists where they can plug in their own models and data sets. So why is this important? Uh, if scientists want to identify a very niche sort of feature and they have a model that is very good at, at you know, classifying that feature. So they can then use that model in place of our more general purpose model and, and is assemble data sets uh, on their own within a Docker container. Uh, connecting the search architecture to a self-supervised model to featureize the images and then an efficient image downloading pipeline to expand our database. What does this mean? So every day at NASA will upload more and more data for the preceding day. Uh, and we need to be able to featureize that new data and add it to our database to be searched upon as it is uploaded to NASA's uh, Gibbs API. And so having this uh, self-supervised model to featureize them and a efficient downloading pipeline to, ex to download them to our database will help us in, in just you know, automatically expanding our search capabilities day by day. Uh, independent models at each zoom level. So as I said in the beginning, Phenomenons don't always exist at the same zoom level. They exist in multiple different zoom levels. Uh, so a hurricane is at a higher zoom level and other things are at a lower one. So you want independent models for recognizing patterns and different phenomena as, as would seem logical. And we wanna create data streaming for daily database updates. This connects to point two. Uh, we just wanna have data coming in as soon as, as it is posted. So scientists can have the maximum database that they can search upon. So in summary, we created a, a search system that can recognize patterns within satellite imagery and then use it to create a search engine for rapid, rapid data set creation. The search engine relies on first a convolutional neural network for image featureization and then a fast approximate nearest neighbor search to search upon those features. The images that we uh, return to the user can be downloaded using any Google Chrome extension that is used for image downloading from a website and a mass image downloading from a website 
And the method of image downloading from directly from our search engine is being worked on. So we can be just done directly from that uh, pop-up you saw. And that's, that's another future thing that we, we hope to add that you can efficiently download those images directly from the pop-up. So that's uh, the scalable reverse image search on Worldview. And if you have any questions, I would encourage all of you to come to the live session. And, and thank you for listening.